hello guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Joma of Joma stitches and today we are going to be making a spaghetti sleeve uh, bustier gown with draping and i intend to design the drape side uh, the dress with this applique i have here and this uh, beads this way so let's get into the drafting process proper so this is the fabric i'm going to be using it's a thick silk fabric and it's uh, it has some vo volume to it like it's thick it's quite thick and it's, there's no stretchiness on either side it's very strong there are no stretchiness on either side so the full length of this gown um the full length of this gown is going to be between 36 to 40 inches okay this is just because um the fabric is not much what i have here is not up to two yards because i'm going to be draping it and draping takes uh takes up a lot of fabric that is why i want to draft so that when i draft it i can use the drafting to manage the fabric i'm going to use for the upper bodies that way i won't have to waste the fabric so that whatever is left i can use it for the draping all right so for this drape for this uh, half length the half length i am working with is 18 inches so I had to divide the box of the upper bodies into two. This is going to be the half of the front and this is the half of the back. And I'm going to be marking out two inches for the back as the difference between the front upper bodies and the back upper bodies. When you take your measurement for your half length for the front part, you understand that the front part is usually um, longer than the back part because of the bust area. So it can be up to 3 inches, 3.54 inches, depending on how your body shape and body type is. Okay. So mine is, I can use up to 3 inches as a difference if I'm making a corset dress and I don't want the corsets to affect my hip bone. Okay, I can use up to 3 inches or 3.5 for my difference. But because this dress I'm making, I don't want it, it's not going to be bone in inside. So I can use 2 inches as a difference between the, the front piece and the back piece. So starting with the shoulder, the shoulder measurement is 7.5 inches. I'm going to be marking 7.5 inches here. And for the back, I am going to be marking 8.5 inches, considering 1 inch as the zip allowance for the back. So I'm marking 8.5 inches for the back and 7.5 inches for the front. And then for the front, we're going to come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slanting, while for the back, we'll come, back, come down by 1 inch for the shoulder slanting. Now from this 1 inch shoulder slanting, I'm going to be imputing my armhole. And so 34 inches divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches is giving me 7.1. So if I measure it from the top here, what I have is 8.1. I'm just going to take it to the front and mark the 8.1. And then I'll connect these two lines. Next, I am going to impute the other measurements, the shoulder to the bust line. So I have the shoulder to the bust line here, the under bust line, and this is the so now I am going to be using a straight ruler to, to connect the shoulder, uh, the shoulder line to the armhole. But now you can take out the neckline. And for my neckline, I want to use 3 inches for the front, 3 inches by 3 inches for the front. And then I'll use my ruler to connect to the shoulder slanting. The back, I'm going to be using the same 3 inches. And because we are considering 1 inch for the zip allowance at the back, Because we are considering one inch as a zip allowance for the back, I'm going to be marking four inches for the back neckline, and I'll come down by one one inch. And then I'll use my ruler to connect it to the shoulder slanting. For the front armhole, I'm going to go up by three inches, and I'll come in by half an inch, connect it to the shoulder slanting. And then use the curve ruler to bring it down here. For the back, I am going to divide the mark by 2, the armhole by 2, which is 3.5. So I'll mark 3.5. Go in by half an inch and connect it to the shoulder slanting and use my curve ruler to curve it. So now at this point, I'm going to be marking my shoulder to the top of my bust. That is where you where you want the dress to start actually if you don't want it to have expose the cleavage okay so i'm going to be using um six inches so i'm going to mark shoulder to this uh, six inches this is my chest line
and this is my armhole this is the chest line this is the armhole take out to take out that from the back i'm going to mark out first let me mark out this one inch for the zip allowance and make it more obvious so to get the data i'm going to be using the boss pan and my boss pan is eight inches which is um four inches if you divide it into two so i'm going to be marking four inches up to the one up to one inch before the bust so i'm going to be using one inches as the dart for this so one inch i'm going to be taking out half an inch on both sides so i'm just going to connect these lines and then for the front dart i am going to be marking out the same four inches because this is going to be a bustier this dress is going to be a bustier I am connecting the line all the way to the chest line. Now, from the bust point, I'm going to come down by one inch. And from the same bust point, I will go up by one inch. Now, for the chest line, I am going to be taking out that on the top, one inch that, which is half inch on both sides. And then for the under bust, I am going to be coming in here 0 0.75 inches. And I'll come out here by one inch. And I'll come down here and I'll take out 0 0.75 inches and 0 0.75 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to be connecting these lines. So for the up, I have taken out half an inch on both sides. I'm going to be using my curve ruler to connect it to the one inch I came up to from the boss point. So I'm going to connect it. And then for the down part, I came in here by half an inch, that's the side front. I came in by si uh, one, point, uh, one inch for the side front, so I'm going to be connecting this line. And then from here, I came in by 0 0.75 inches. So this dot here is 0 0.75 inches, and here is one inch. And then here I have 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Okay, so now I'm going to be using my straight ruler to connect it to the waistline. And so now is to divide the boss by four, and the boss we are working with is boss 34 inches. So boss 34 divided by four is 8.5 inches so i'm going to be marking 8.5 inches and then i'm going to mark the same thing here for the back 8.5 inches and then for the waistline the waistline is 28 inches divided by 4 is 7 inches for the back we'll add 1 inch for the dart and we have 8 inches so i'm going to be marking 8 inches and for the front we have 1.5 inches here i'm going to mark 8.5 inches so when you divide the waist 28 inches by 4 you get 7 inches and you add 1.5 inches which is this that and you get 8.5 inches which is what i have here okay so now i'm going to connect the lines for the back now i will also extend the line all the way to the chest line and this is because this dress is going to stop at the chest line because we do not need it to get to the shoulder okay so i extended the marking from the bust all the way all the way to the chest line okay then for the front i will extend the bust measurement as well to the chest line from the under bust is 27 inches 27 divided by 4 is 6.75 so i will now add the um okay, so i'm going to add 1.8 inches for the dart and I have 8.55, so I can just mark out 8.6. So I'm going to connect all the lines. So now I'm going to be taking out the two inches difference of the waist or from the back piece. The difference between the back half length and the front half length, which is two inches, I'm going to be taking it out as a bust dart. So I'm going to come here and I'll mark the two inches and I'll use my straight ruler and connect it to the bust point. Now I have I've told us several in this set on this channel that if you are making a bustier for someone who is very busty and that their bust is very full, 
say somebody from bus 38 and above bus 40 bus 45 50 just keep going um and their bus is quite full don't mark when you're taking out their, their bus that you're not going to mark it all the way to the bus point you're first going to go ahead and come out by one inch from the bus point and then from there you will do your own that's where you will now mark out this so say this person now it has a big bus i'll come out by one inch here and then i'm going to connect it to the bus that that is how you take out the dots for the for someone who is busty i've shown us that severally in this class and you can go through our previous videos to learn how you can draft for someone with a bigger bust or fuller bust okay so let's try and cut out the back pattern so that we can now take out the bust that for the front so now i'm going to be taking out this dart for the bust so i'm going to be folding in the dart like so you can choose to cut it open and place it on one another but i i use this method and then i'm going to be folding it in like this to the bust point so now that i've done it like this you notice that there is now a difference between the the lines to the and the initial line we created so now i'm going to be connecting this using a ruler okay I'll use my tape to hold it down and then I'll cut it out. Note that the difference we have for the shoulder here is 6 inches. No matter how thin you want to make your spaghetti sleeve, you just know that what you are adding to this is 6 inches as the spaghetti sleeve. And then for the back zip tightening, I'm going to come here and I'll come in by half an inch. So I'm coming in by half an inch on the back part. And I'm going to slant this half an inch to the bust line. Okay, this is so that when you add a zip at the back, there will be no bulginess around the back zip area. Also, when you do this thing, also repeat it on the skirt part of this dress. But even if you are going to drape it, also remove this half an inch. So this is the pattern. And because I've taken out the bust that when you bring these two together, you see that they now match. They are now equal so this is the pattern we are working with so now i'm going to be transferring this pattern to fabric i've transferred it to fabric as you can see i've transferred it to fabric adding only one inch sewing allowance on the sides okay and then half an inch on here to join the um the bustier area so i just went ahead to cut out two long ropes that are 13 inches so i have it as 6.5 6.5 inches folded in half that I'm going to be using as the spaghetti sleeve. So I'm going to go ahead and sew it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew them like so. It's three inches when you uh, three inches. So when you fold it in half like this, you have one and a half inch. I'm going to go ahead and use half an inch to sew it a straight line, turn it inside that and I iron it. And then I'm also going to go ahead and join these ones. So you'll be shocked at what I'm using as a lining. This is what I'm using as a lining piece. So I am going to sew this once, the bustier. I am going to go ahead and sew it with half of an inch, which is the sewing allowance. So I'm going to sew them and sew the lining pieces. And I will take out the darts and iron them. All right, so I've sewn the pieces together. Now I'm going to go ahead and iron them. And then we'll start joining them. We'll start joining the back pieces and the front pieces. So, um, This is the the spaghetti sleeve i'm going to be using i've turned it inside out after sewing it and i've ironed it as you can see ironed it flat that way you leave the the seam line will be in the middle so you, it, it will not show on the on the top and i've also ironed all the back pieces these are the back pieces i've taken out the darts and i've ironed them okay so this is the front piece as well and i've ironed it as well so um this one i want to show us the to keep the front piece open after iron i had to use sd to open the seam and iron it and keep it that way so it has a clean finish outside now what i'm going to do now is i am going to be sewing the sides i am going to be sewing the sides with one inch the sewing allowance i'm going to be sewing it with one inch and I will sew the lining differently and sew the main, sew, sew the main fabric differently. So I have joined them, as you can see, joined it uh, 
join the back sides to the front side. So I did the same thing for the back piece, as you can see. So what I'm going to do now is attach the zip to the front piece. But I'm not going to sew it to the end. I'm going to sew it up to here. Remember, we're going to be draping the lower part of this dress to it. So I'm going to attach the zip all the way to here. So I'm going to sew it on the right on the main fabric first. Then I will, and then before I will now use the the back piece, that's the lining piece, as a lining to sew the upper side. Okay. Okay. So I've gone ahead to sew the zipper, and I stopped here. This is so we we'll have room to attach the lower bodies before we can now sew the zipper to the end. So I did the same thing here. So this is it. This is the front and this is the back. So I am going to, to sew the chest line. So I'm just going to take this other one, the lining piece, place it on top, and I'm going to go ahead and sew the chest line. So I'm going to pin the sleeve like so. I'm pinning it exactly on the seam line for the bust, bust area. And then it's supposed to come like so. The sleeve is supposed to come from here all the way to the back here. So I'm going to be pinning it on the back here. So I'm going to take it like this. And I'm going to pin it at the back here. Okay, let me leave it on this dark line as well. And now I'm going to take this other one. And I'll place it here. Right side facing each other. And I'm going to go and sew the chest line. So here I have gone ahead to sew it. And so this is it. I have to sew it very close to the top so it will relax properly. So this is it, and this is the the spaghetti sleeve. Not so spaghetti, but you, you get the point. Okay, to so show us this is S um, hemming gum. Here is hemming gum. Okay, so I placed it here while I was sewing. You use it to join, to join the this back piece, the lining piece, and the main bodies, so that when you are done, when you iron it, when you are iron it with your steam iron, it is going to hold perfectly. And now we are going to go into concealing the zip line. I am going to go ahead and cover this place like this, and I'm going to sew on this place. I am going to sew it very close to the zip line. You can use the back line. You can use this marking on the back as your guide to sew it. So when you hold it down like so, go ahead and sew very close to this place. And stop around where you stopped here too. Okay? So that will give the, the zip line very neat finishing. Okay, so here as you can see, I have gone ahead to sew it. I have sewn this side. Okay? And I've done the same thing here too. So I'm going to turn it inside out and let's see. Okay, so this is it. This is the back and this is the front. Okay. It's looking like this. And this is the inside. This is the inside. Look at the zip area. Looking clean. This is the front. I'm going to go ahead and iron here. Iron this place down and then I'll put it on the mannequin so that we'll drape the lower bodies. Okay, so this is it on the mannequin. So this is it on the mannequin. Here is the, the front and this is the back. I have to zip it up. So now I am going to drape it. And to do this, I'm going to merge this fabric Make sure it's that is equal like so. Hmm? I want to pin the pin this place first, and then at the back, I'm going to turn it to the back, making sure this is at the middle. So if this be at the middle, then this is the center. I am going to be pinning one inch. Now this one inch is going to be our zip allowance because the zip is going to extend up to this place. So I am going to be pinning the zip allowance at the back like so. I've secured the zip allowance at the back. 
okay so now i am going to hold this down to the back here with a pin as well so now um what i'm doing is i'm deciding where i want my draping to come what direction i want it to come so i'm basically making up my mind right here right now so i am pinning it this trying to pin it so that we'll secure the top and be sure that this is going to be equal because we're going to be taking out this pin and resewing this back to the upper bodies okay all right so now here i'm going to start so what design do I want? I actually wanted to pleat the front and pleat it to give it the pleated effect in the front. So it will just come this way and be gathered up to the front. And so to achieve that, I'm going to start pleating. Because I want both this both sides to have the same design, I am going to pleat the same thing I am pleating at the front, on the right or at the left as well. And so I continue pleating it one after the other, one on each side until I completed the fabric. The fabric is not much so I didn't get enough fullness. Now this is the pleats I've done. And I also think that a softer fabric would have done a better job. So if you are trying yours, use a soft fabric. I'm going to gently take out the pin, cut it open at the back so that we can have space for the zipper. Okay. And then I'm going to be sewing it. So we've taken it out from the, from the mannequin and this is the back piece. I'm just going to go ahead and cut through. I'm going to cut through the back piece. So let's take out the pins. So now I am going to attach this. Hmm? I am going to go ahead and attach these back pieces. I'm going to sew it off to the front that in this direction and sew it on the other direction. And then I will extend the zip all the way to stop somewhere around here. And then I will bring it back to transfer this pleats to the bodies. Transfer the pleats to the way it is going to be on the bodies and show us how we're going to join the front bodies. So I have attached the zipper. I've attached the zipper at the back as you can see. And so I still have not touched the front in any way or form. Okay, so this split now is supposed to come all the way to the center. So now this is what I'm going to be doing. So I am going to replete this and try to make it come up a little bit. Okay. So to do that, let's mark the center. Here we have 6.6. .6, so that's about 3.3. .3. So this should be the center. So I am going to take here, take out the first pin from the pleats. And I'm going to come up here. Oh, this one held down there. I'm transferring the pleats. Now, you also need to know the quantity of fabric that's on that so you don't use more than you should okay so that's why i'm going to lose it out one after the other and rearrange it so so i'm coming up here like this and placing this here and then i'm going to do the same thing here take out this pins and so This is it. So this is the pleats that I'm going to be sewing. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is repeat the same thing on this side. Take up this one to this side and then I'm going to join them together. Okay. Um, now that I've arranged the pleats, what I'm going to do is, so from here, I am going to join here with a straight line. So I'm going to turn this place like this in reverse. From here, I'm going to find the 3.3 .3 that leads us to the middle of this dress, which is here. So I will mark it. 
And then from this side, I will also find the same 3.3, which is here, and I'll mark it. So these three two, these two places, I'm going to merge it together. From here, I am going to sew a straight line, arranging these to meet each other. So since all the pleats are supposed to be the same thing, so I am going to be arranging it like this. Holding the pleats together. Okay, so um, when you are joining them together, what I'm trying to do is match the pleats. I'm matching the pleats so that I will pin it together and one will not be longer than the other. Although it may not be perfect, but just try your best to make it like that. Now this excess that is here, you can also pleat this a little if you want. Just a little pleat. Or you can leave it like that because I intend to fold in here before I will know what I'll do with the left of it. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll leave this one here. I'm going to use a straight line. So you can use your ruler as a guide. So I'm going to sew a straight line. Make sure wherever you are sewing this line is going to cover all of these pleats and all the pleats will be inside. Okay, I'm checking the opening where the opening lands. I'm seeing the opening here. So I'm going to focus my, my sewing from here. I'm going to run a straight line from the center all the way here to here and i'm going to stop here so let me go ahead and run that straight line okay so i've run a straight line here holding it together so let's take out all the pins both the pin i use in holding both of them together and the pins i used in holding the individual pleats so i'm going to open this place open it turn it inside out This is it so this is it look at the pleats we have here this is it um they are not per perfectly aligned but if you can get yours to perfectly align that is the goal it will be nice and so now the opening we have here i am going to go ahead and sew it so let me open the zipper so i'm going to hold it down like so and I will sew this place. Sew here to hold down this, this, the, the pleat that is around here. I will hold it down with a straight sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that now and bring it because we need to trim out these excesses. It's not supposed to be this long. So, okay. so here is the straight line. I've gone to sew it. So I've sewn it and as you can see, I opened the pleat side. Opened it and sewed this to this direction and this part to this direction. And this is it. So this is it, and this is the, the front, the center front, as you can see. I'm just going to go ahead and hem it. Then I can put it on the mannequin and see how we're going to use the trimmings and the beads, the stones, to design it. So guys, I decided to cut the pattern, to cut it to the initial measurement I had in mind, which was my, which is... Uh, 40 or 38 inches so i am going to go ahead and cut out this pattern from here so i am going to be cutting it from here so i will stop at 38 inches i'm going to go and hem it and so guys so here it is on the mannequin and i've been heating up the glue gun for some time now and it is hot enough for me to use it so i'm going to go ahead and use the glue gun to run over it and apply it as many as i can until it comes out looking the way i want so basically to apply the glue gun you have to just keep applying it a little by little so that i don't coagulate or i don't dry dry so it doesn't dry up before you place it on the pattern and this is what we came out with and I just want to say, if you want to try yours, try uh, try it with a fabric that's easier to manage, a fabric that is softer. And it's lately, we have very some colorful and beautiful. I, really need to add I want to say stars. thank you guys and welcome. And I hope you get to learn one or two things from this channel. And for the old subscribers, I want to say a very big thank you. You guys have been like a big inspiration and encouragement to me. And I appreciate you guys staying with me. 
and so for those who are coming for the first time who are visitors who are yet to subscribe do well to subscribe and stay tuned uh, i have new content coming every now and then so i can't wait to try this on it really looks so cute and so i'm going to post the video as a short on this channel thank you guys and see you in my next tutorial bye bye